Hey ladies and gents, it's Spoonie Pizzas here and it's the penultimate day before eFootball 2022 version 1 launches. In today's video we're going to take a look at the controls in eFootball 2022 version 1 and there are a few surprises for me personally considering the feedback I was given during the playtest at Windsor and the changes that they've actually made. So on the left hand side we see the attacking controls and the defensive controls on the right. So let's just start by focusing on the attacking controls. The font was a little difficult to read on smaller devices so I've typed over the image so hopefully you can read it easier. But the biggest change for me on the attacking side is the dash button being moved back to R1 or right bumper. Why am I surprised? Because it was set to R2 or right trigger which is an adaptive trigger which allows you to run at various speeds depending how much it's pressed. The fact they've moved back to R1 and right bumper suggests they've moved away from the adaptive feedback and I believe the reason for this is because players found defending too difficult. People found it too hard not to hold sprint down to the max and probably added complexity in development and balance. Balancing the game just right so defending players wouldn't go skidding by after a skill or turn was performed by the attacking player. L2 or left trigger is now called shield instead of physical which is a much more accurate name but I imagine performs the same task as before. The fact this is an adaptive trigger makes sense because it allows you to control how much you want to shield the ball and how much distance between your player and the ball you're willing to sacrifice. The shielding and physical battles was one of the few plus points from my playtest that really stood out so I'm glad they've kept this as left trigger or L2. The rest of the attacking controls are standard PES controls so I won't need to cover the rest but as part of my test tomorrow I will be setting R2 as my sprint just to see if it's an adaptive trigger. Now let's take a look at the defensive controls. Now that I'm looking at the defensive controls I believe the player playing may have changed R1 and R2 around. The reason for this is because the, on the Geki Saka channel, which has been an excellent source of information provided by a Japanese pro player, he said R1 was team pressure. And looking here, R1 is set to dash. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see how the controls actually lay out. But I've got a strong suspicion that this player has actually changed them around. There are three key things to take away from the defensive controls. The first is the shoulder charge. This isn't something we've seen or used before, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this has been implemented and what the benefits are perhaps over using this instead of pressure or maybe even super cancel if it's still in the game. I think we may have seen an example of it in yesterday's good and bad bits video, but we'll just have to wait and see. Call for pressure is basically what I was talking about the other day as team press. If you see my new controls video, you'll have a good idea on how this works. This is where your entire team presses after one touch of the button, according to the Geki Saka channel. But I have seen reports that you tap it once for one player to press, twice for another player to press, or three times for your entire team to press. But that could get confusing because we don't know how long it lasts for and the time allowed between each button press before it's considered part of the chain, if that makes sense. Finally, pressure is now set to X, which was set to match up in 0.9.1 build, which allows you to press one player with the ball and makes sense as this is what it's always been in PES beforehand. I just hope that it's not as overpowered as it was in PES 2020 or 2021 online. And that applies for both the call for pressure and the pressure buttons. Don't forget my stream of eFootball 2022 version 1 is tomorrow from 8.15 British Summer Time tomorrow. I hope you guys are going to be there because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Some very interesting controls here which obviously we can change as we see fit. But I'd love to know your opinions on the controls. Let me know down in the comments if they're too complicated or whether you, you're going to readjust them as you see fit. How, how do you guys prefer your setup? Anyway, that is all for me, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care and goodbye.